Hey, Paula. How's it going? Oh, sorry, Josh. I don't go by Paula anymore. Uh, this this a big change just from... This is kind of a big change. Um, can you read the screen? Can you actually read the screen in this remote podcast uh, software we're using? Oh, um, I'm sorry. Uh, hey, imaginative leader. <laughs> How's it going? <laughs> Uh, y'all, our little pod, we, okay, so I don't know if you knew this, but there's a, there is a pandemic and as such, surprise, surprise, um, as, people just continuously are getting their news only from us mm-hmm. and we forget to mention stuff. Um, as such, Josh and I are using this software where we video chat and record. And I have a much better mic this time. So I don't sound like I'm from the inside of a kazoo. Yes. And for whatever reason, it has jinxed me, and I cannot name myself. So when I enter the chat, it makes up a different name for me each time. And most of the time, it's like Squiggly Rabbit or like Moon Power. But today, it's Imaginative Leader, um, which is, I, Josh, it is such a terrible automatically generated name. Because if it wasn't me and you, if like this was like a professional setting. We're professionals. We've been paid for this before. Um, if, if you didn't know me, if this was not like a podcast between two pals and I was a work person who logged on, you would think I named myself imaginative leader, which is such a weird power move. I was going to say it's got very strong North Korea energy. (laughs) (laughs) Like dear glorious imaginative leader, please, please speak your wisdom into the microphone so that we might do our chores while listening to your dulcet tones. <laughs> so yeah, so for the rest of the podcast, I am imaginative leader and you're Josh, <laughs> which is weird. Cause yours is also an automatically generated name, but we got it right this time. <laughs> what have you been up to? Um, I've been, I've been cooking too much for one person to eat. Yeah. Has been what I've do, been doing. That's really, I think, the biggest thing about this whole shelter in place, stay at home order is that I live alone and I've always kind of cooked for one. But now that I am, you know, I stocked up on, on uh, you know, supplies and things like that, I did not hoard things. I got the right number of garbanzo beans. You got the right number of garbanzo beans. And yes, you got 400 packets of toilet paper. Yeah, but that's because I'm just, I'm a very dirty boy. Um, and so uh, what I'm realizing is just how much food I am, at, like the portion size of most recipes is, and how little my my stomach is versus those. And so it's like I've been having to, uh, for example, yesterday, I was feeling very kind of like it was raining. It was gross out. I was feeling very like, oh, this has been two or three weeks of this. I want to do something nice for myself. So what I did was I baked myself chocolate chip banana bread. Now, Paula, imagine that this shit just absolutely slaps. It hits different in quarantine. (laughs) You know what I mean? It's just really, it came out really, really, really well. And then after I had a slice or two last night, I looked at it and had the realization that I'm going to have to eat this entire loaf of banana bread by myself. You say that like that's a problem and that's not like, yeah, that's how bread works. (laughs) On normal serving size. (laughs) Um, Yeah, it's just, yeah, it's a lot of butter. It's delicious. It's a lot of butter. What yeah. have you been up to? Well, I tried I tried baking because I'm a sucker uh for people telling me what to do. Sure. And yeah, everyone's Instagram. Instagram is big into baking. And I I'll tell you what, Josh, I continue to suck at it. <laughs> oh no. Oh, I no. tried to make those Allison Roman like very viral shortbread cookies and they taste pretty good, but they look like garbage. Mm-hmm. They look like trash. Sure. Um, so I did that. Shortbread um, cookies. Yes. I have been um, I've been desperately trying to clean out every closet, which has been a whole thing. Mm-hmm. And I taught my mom how to video chat. Oh, that's a big one. A friend, a friend told me that every day it's like the four C's. It's like you need to do something calming, 
something care, something creative. And I forget the other one, but I want to say something cool. See, I thought you were saying, I thought you were saying it's like the four C's. And I was like, sure. It's the, Mm -hmm. the rule of law. When you're on the ocean, this is what sailors do because there's nothing to look at except for the horizon. It's the Atlantic. It's the other two. (laughs) Welcome to being earnest, a very sincere podcast. I'm Josh. I'm imaginative leader and Paula. (laughs) And we're here to bring you the earnest and sincere topics of the day. Tip of the hat. Well, I'll tell you what. The one we're doing this week is a topic of the day. Because this is what I've really been up to. Yes. Uh, What's our topic this week, Paula? It's video gaming. Video gaming. Yeah. You've been playing video games all day? I've been playing a specific video game. Um, What video game have you been playing? Let me walk you through. It is called Dream Daddy. For for the audience at home, that was Dream Daddy? Dream Daddy. Sure. And here's how Dream Daddy works. So you're a daddy. Okay. And you get to design your kind of look. So I'm a hot daddy. Okay. I and would expect no less. You and your teenage daughter, Amanda, who's a senior in high school. She's 18. She's doing... She's struggling a little bit. She's a great girl, but she's just kind of losing sight of things. The senior slump, you know, bullying, that kind of stuff. Can I ask a quick question? I'm so sorry to interrupt. Um, Is this a fiction that you or a setting that you are able to choose? Or for every daddy that gets created, Amanda is 18 and struggling a little bit. From my understanding, this is this is your daddy world. This is the daddy world you've been presented. And I I will also say I thought this was going to be more Simsy. And it's not very Simsy. Uh, it's kind of like they're telling you a story. You're sometimes choosing options, but I'm in. Here's how it goes. All right. So I'm a dream daddy and my name is Floyd with three L's that I did. He's great. Uh, so Amanda's other father, uh, is no longer with us. He's dead daddy. (laughs) And so, (laughs) but I think they don't, you don't really see a picture of him, but I'm assuming he was older and very wealthy because my daddy, as a daddy, I don't work. Sure. So, the money must be coming from somewhere. So Amanda and I move across town uh, to a new cul-de-sac. Um, kind of like a hip, cool area. And I'll tell you what. This cul-de-sac is filled with single daddies. And we're all going on dates with each other. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and there's there's six or seven daddies. Um, so you're kind of going on dates with all of them. You go on two dates per daddy. And then your third date, you're kind of picking them at a serious daddy. Uh, so here are your options. And you, I'm going to tell you the options. You tell me which kind of daddy you are. Okay, so there's several types of daddies. Um, the first one is just like regular daddy, like um, grilling, fishing kind of daddy. And then the second like Hallmark daddy, card daddy. Yeah, this is this is a daddy uh, for the ages. Lots of dad jokes. Um, you know, loves um, you know regular dad stuff. Sure, You're exactly right. Hallmark daddy. Uh, number two is kind of fitness daddy. Mm. Fitness daddy is the most conventionally hot one. Um. Number three is a uh, uh, music barista daddy. Okay. Does he have a good tea and or a ponytail? Uh, he has like kind of like long hair. Got it. But he's like, he's like cool daddy. We went to he a does. Oh, ooh, oh, yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Uh, number four is uh, now this one's actually a little tough because he's smart daddy, but he's also Amanda's English teacher. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. And then there's youth pastor daddy. Mm-hmm. And now here's the key with you's pastor daddy is he is married to a woman. And I think that, I think the point is you need to break him up, but you know, and then the last one that I will say this daddy is a little bit out of left field. You let's play a game. You take a guess. Which daddy is missing from this? Which, which daddy stereotype is missing from dream daddy? Um, like muscle car or like uh biker daddy. Would be what I'm oh, guessing is I guess missing. I did forget one. There is there is Rebel Daddy. There okay, is Rebel Daddy. It. But the one that I'm specifically thinking of is Goth Vampire Daddy. <laughs> okay. Okay. So that one's a bit out of left field. Um, and so you're kind of going on daddy dates, but really the crux of this game is Amanda is going through it, and you've got to be there and you've got to be a good dad to her. So it's more it it it's more about the dad than the daddy. Yeah, absolutely. Uh-huh. Absolutely. You're so, still parenting for sure. Okay, got it. And and I'm glad that they've covered all the different types of daddies. 
there's only there's only seven or eight types of daddies. They got them all. Yeah, right. Exactly. Someone had a definitive had to you know definitively figure it out, and I'm glad that they did. Um, your original question was, what type of daddy do you, do I think I am? Yeah, what kind of daddy would you be? Um, I'm gonna answer, and then I'd like you to answer as well. Which one do you think I am? Out of uh, those type of daddies? Out of those type of daddies. Oh, and, yeah, it's very uh, clear which... It's yeah, clear which one you think you are, and it's very clear which one you are. Oh, yeah. Well, let's not be mean about it, but yes. <laughs> I mean, I think I am trying to cultivate a a a brand that is closer to fitness daddy, but we all know I'm English teacher daddy. You're absolutely English teacher daddy, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Which one are you? That's a good question. Um, I think in my heart of hearts, I would love to be vampire daddy, but I was gonna I, say, I think I'm probably closer to youth pastor daddy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm not like all other daddies. Turns around chair. <laughs> um, you know, that's a really good question. It's kind of hard because the daddy that speaks closest to my heart is Floyd Darling, the daddy I am. <laughs> sure, sure. You've manifested your own sense of daddy. Yeah, in a way, I kind of created the daddy that all other daddies need right now. Yeah, right. Exactly. Well, and that, at the end of the day, is being the center of attention is the daddy that you want to be. That's what I want to be. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's an interesting game. Uh, really interested in the vibes of uh, Hot Daddy Cul-de-Sac. Is that what it's called? Well, no, but that's what it is. It's a cul-de-sac <laughs> that's filled with all the hot daddies. They're all neighbors, and they all hang out together. This, um... This feels too organized to be serendipitous. Like, I'm worried about the legality of this many hot daddies in one gated community. Like, it feels like a situation that civil rights lawyers could probably put against them. That, like, only hot daddies are allowed in this neighborhood. This feels like a larger yeah. social issue. Yeah, I agree. It's a it's a very, like, a, it's like a weird Twilight Zone. Mm -hmm. Daddy mm -hmm. zone. Ugh, I don't like that. <laughs> um, well, I'm glad that you're doing the thing that uh, every other person who's uh, sheltering in place is doing because playing everyone's Daddy. playing playing Dream Daddy. <laughs> um, it seems like everyone is playing Animal Crossing right now. Oh, which everybody is, is loving Animal Crossing. Um, can I admit something that potentially some of our listeners might yell into their headphones uh, about yell at their and then stop listening to our podcast. Yeah. I don't get it. I, um, I, I understand that. I will say that, uh, for me, animal crossing feels very there, but for the grace of God, go I like if I had the tools and I had the game, I would love it, but I don't have the tools and I don't have the game. So right. kind of yeah, because nice it's, I'm excluded from. Yeah, it's it's almost impossible to get it right now. There's a couple different items that seem to not be able to be deliverable. It's like toilet paper, uh, flour and yeast from aforementioned baking frenzy on for all millennials on Instagram and Nintendo Switch and uh, and Animal Crossing. Yeah, you just, like can't get it. Um I don't know. So I think the thing for me is that Animal Crossing feels very much like it was late elementary school, school, middle school, something like that. Like when it came out on GameCube, it was a huge thing. And I remember my friends who had GameCubes were playing it and really liked it. And I didn't have a GameCube. And so therefore I never got into it. And so when it's coming back here and everyone's feeling super nostalgic about it. So I don't get it in that the game looks like you're just doing chores. And yeah. I would it argue like that the thing, it seems like the thing that I'm putting off doing already. Right. I was like, mm -hmm. literally the only thing I can still do is chores. Right. <laughs> well, I think that you get to make your own outfits, which is cool. Sure. Sure. I can make my own outfits though, by going into my closet, <laughs> you know? And it's like, I don't need some virtual, like raccoon to tell me that I'm in debt. <laughs> <laughs> like I understand the concept already. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I guess um, I have very little familiarity with animal crossing. Sure. Me neither. I'm I, not at um, all qualified to talk about this thing. What are we trying to cross is kind of my question. 
I think Animal Crossing is maybe the name of the town. I don't think we're trying to, if you're suggesting trying to genetically cross different animals into new <laughs> so and exciting I hybrids. About, I think it's about creating a hot animal hybrid, the hottest animal, the Tiger King. <laughs> Which I also haven't watched yet. No spoilers. Oh, gosh. You gotta watch The Tiger King. See, this is where when the zeitgeist comes together and everyone, there's a monoculture where everyone's watching the same thing. If I haven't watched it by a certain point, I'm like, I don't care enough. I don't want to. I don't care. I'm going to keep it at arm's length. You have nothing but time right now. I know. Get in on it. It, From everything I can tell, it seems like Tiger King is a live action reboot or remake of dream daddy i wish it was a live action remake of dream daddy you know what that's what i'm gonna make that's what you're gonna make this is the yeah. one piece of brilliant art that you're gonna create from uh your time off and with this all the time my, in the world uh, this is my uh great american novel <laughs> dream daddy the book do you have nostalgic video games that are like just comfort video games i guess um, I mean, when I was a kid, I had a Super Nintendo. Mm-hmm. Um, I wasn't such a gamer. Like, I wasn't like a gamer gamer. Um, I enjoyed it. Uh, I guess what I always think of with games, um, or like my childhood is it, it feels like, uh, we would sometimes go to Blockbuster mm-hmm. or whatever the like knockoff Alaskan equivalent of GameStop was game mm. igloo and, uh, game, game igloo. No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) Game Moose. (laughs) It has nothing to do. Moose Stop. (laughs) It's where you would get your moose jerky for the week, but they also sold video games. And um, we would get, like, I remember, like, sometimes we would get, like, the one that was on clearance for Super Nintendo. Sure. Uh, uh, Which means that, like, the games I had were, like, weird as hell. Sure. Like I had like I had like Super Mario Brothers and Street Fighter, which are two perfect games. The game I really want to talk about that I had, and much like the video from the ring, it just popped up. And it was called <laughs> The New Adventures of Pac-Man. Oh. New Adventures. Now, are you familiar with the Pac-Man? Oh yeah. The uh the hungry boy who gobbles up ghosts. Yes. Now imagine a world where he is no longer in that and instead he has adventures to do things like help a dog and go hang gliding. Hmm. Now imagine the game made no sense. The graphics were terrifying. Uh, Imagine that Pac-Man, for whatever reason, is in a terrible mood the entire time. (laughs) Like you will try to control him to do something and he'll go, Oh, so he can't talk either. Uh, I mean, not to you. Like, he'll sure. just refuse to do things. I love that um, premise of a video game where your controller won't actually allow... It's not a controller. It's a suggester. And the, the thing in the game can decide whether you it actually wants to move left or punch or jump. <laughs> oh, I do need to apologize. It was not Pac-Man World 2. It was the original... New Adventures of Pac-Man. Got it. Uh, yeah, so that was... I'm, I'm looking up the Wikipedia right now so we can kind of learn. All right, so there is a... There, I guess, was a short-lived Pac-Man animated series because kids could not get enough of that game. That hungry boy that with no arms and no body. How uh, does he walk so, a dog without arms? So, well, no, now he, has, now he has arms and legs. That's a... That's disgusting yeah and i i remember that uh the first level is you have to get milk for pack baby oh wow and i could just never get past that i spent years trying to get freaking milk for freaking pack baby i existentially don't think i can get past the fact that i know that there's a mr pac-man and a mrs pac-man and i assume based on their surnames or their their titles that they are that they're married, but I, and there's also Pac Baby and Pac Junior. Yeah, two children. I just how, how why do they? 
Oh, uh, uh, I don't want to think about Pac-Man reproducing. How pack people make love? Yeah. Yeah. I don't. Well, is the ghost essential to, to back, it? Daddy. Is, I is, think the ghost is part of it. Yeah. Yeah. Like he needs to eat a certain number of ghosts and then he can, you know. Well, I wh- hate wh- telling this, but I think the original, the original game where he's eating the dots, I think that's actually his mating call. Oh, gotcha. It's just every one of those is a Viagra. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> so that was, um, that's kind of uh, what I remember from video games. Josh, what were your nostalgia games? So for me, there were a number of different factors that led to me being incredibly behind the curve on all cool and fun and new video games. Mm-hmm. The first of which... Because you were busy the- reading freaking nerd books. Mm-hmm. Yep, all the all the Star Wars extended universe novelizations. Ooh, I was right. <laughs> um, so we had Macintosh computers, which in the nineties and two thousands was just a, a a torpedo in the ability to play any kind of cool video game because everything was on PC. Yeah, as opposed to as opposed to Mac. So, but was it, did you have the kind that was like, like the candy colors in the back? Oh, like the iMac with the, yes. with the, that we did not, we did oh, not have those, those iMacs. were so cool. We had them in my elementary school. The oh, computer yeah. lab was all those. They were all blue. Oh, ours were all blue. And then the teachers, some of the teachers would have orange ones. And it was yeah, like, right. Exactly. Like it was so legally good. blonde or something. Yeah. Um, so we, I had that, and then it. We didn't get a PS One until the PS Two came out. Okay. Um, and similarly for PS Three and PS Two, and my parents had a pretty strict no violent video games policy. Okay. Um. So that explains why you're so bad at kicking. <laughs> it does. It really does. It's why I roll over in every single... I'm not going to survive in an apocalyptic situation. Thanks, mom and dad. (laughs) Um, But so that meant that I had a lot of sports games. Um, Mm. A lot of sports games. And I I am not shitting you here. I know everyone's like, oh, I had an uncle who works at Nintendo. And it was always a joke. Like, I actually have an uncle who worked at Lucasfilms. So he would send us... Yeah. I had an uncle who... How How do you not talk about only that? You love Lucasfilms. I do. I do. I love I love the Star War. Um so he would send us the latest games from LucasArts. So I played a lot of uh LucasArts games. And the one that I want to talk about here is Star Wars Pod Racer. After Star episode Wars 1 Pod Racer. I played it on my Macintosh computer. You uh could they created a whole universe of pod racers based on episode one when, you now, know, Josh, baby Anakin. You will need to explain a pod racer to me. Sure, sure. So, um, is it like that show Love is Blind? It's exactly like that. <laughs> no, that it's, it's, um, so think of like the Kentucky Derby, right? I always am. And then think about instead of horses, you were, you know, this is a bad one. Think about NASCAR. But instead of cars, they're in little floating, uh, like floating buggies that have huge engines in the front, in the back. And they all look different. It's like, a, it's almost like Fast and the Furious, actually. Yeah, it's Fast and oh, the okay. Furious in space. And right. there's all these little I, demons. I, I will tell you right now, they are working on that sequel. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. Fast and the Furious, Mars Drift, uh, Tatooine Drift. Oh my God, has someone made this yet? Someone has to have made this. Um, TM, 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 it's ours TM, now. TM, 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 TM. We control both the IP for <laughs> Fast and the Furious and Star Wars. Um, and so, like, all these tiny little creatures, there's literally just like a significant amount of episode one is this pod race that Anakin is a part of. And what's happening is. Anakin at that point is owned by like a pretty problematic alien character who's clearly Jewish in a way that's pretty anti-Semitic because it's the prequels are pretty terrible. 
Um, and so Anakin's basically racing for his freedom, essentially. If he wins the race and he's like a 12 year old kid versus these hardened drivers and he's, you know, racing through this thing. It's kind of like in the first Harry Potter movie, how they haven't figured out that the half the movie can't be Quidditch. Mm. It's a similar kind of vibe. Um, but anyway, (laughs) yeah. So (laughs) they made a whole video game of this scene. Mm. And you could like, I don't know, you could you could go through all these different tracks and all these different planets, and there were all these different drivers they created, and you could you could make your co- your pod racer faster or more agile or whatever. And all I can think of is that in this, uh, I played it a lot. I could never beat it because the second to last level was really hard, and anyone who's beaten it probably cheated. Um, and uh, so the announcers did this thing uh where if you if you did the fastest lap time that you'd ever done on that track um they would do this stupid thing and it was like early video games where they only had so many phrases like how yeah. in madden every time you overthrew someone it was like a little bit too much mustard on that one like that was the only thing they'd recorded for that um in this if you beat the lap time it went it's a new lap record <laughs> and so my brother and i just Every time one of us goes somewhere kind of quickly and we're like out of breath going somewhere, the other one will be like, it's a new lap record. (laughs) (laughs) I think something that early video games also taught me was cheat codes. Cheat codes. (laughs) Did you, were you a cheater? Because I was a cheater. Well, uh, well, we already know that you cheat at board games, which is unhinged. Um, But I... It's not cheating if no one catches you. That is absolutely the house rules are always that you can do whatever you want as long as someone doesn't catch you. And then you have to be honest about it. I have chills. That is so incorrect that my body is just rejecting this phrase. I'm a gentleman criminal. I'm going to like just start projectile vomiting. Uh, And you have to watch. Um, I I did cheat, but I I used the cheat codes in Sims, where it was very much encouraged. So you could oh, do yeah. Rosebud or Motherload. For yes. Money. Oh my God, Mo- Rosebud Motherload, and then the one that was like semicolon comma semicolon comma semicolon comma or something. That's like how that. you expanded it. So that's yes. how you multiplied it multiple times. Yeah. And I I do have the Sims now. Um, and I I do use cheat codes, but more than that, I use mods, which uh the Sims encourages people to download or to create their own worlds and you can download it and add it to your game so i have a lot of those so i like have one that like um toddlers can just murder anyone at any time with a knife they keep in their pocket um i have one that um like they can like sometimes like a guy comes to their house and they can just do ayahuasca um one's called dream daddy (laughs) they're all daddies (laughs) So that's about as close as I get. Do you use cheat codes? I definitely went through a phase as a younger person where I couldn't deal with the fact that I wouldn't be able to beat something. Yeah. And so I was just a little cheat, just like little friggin' cheater Um, where, you know, with the Sims, I was like, why would you start with the starter stuff when you could have lots of money and start with that? Well, that's insane. Because you know what? The fun of Sims is not having them disappear and go to work for eight hours. Right, exactly. That's absurd. No. I, I'm going to grow up Sam's, and do that. I'm doing yeah. this to get away from life. The fun of Sam's was buying the big heart bed and making them, you know, kiss. Do woohoo. Well, you know, kiss. We're keeping it PG. But uh, the I fun said of Sam's woohoo. That's PG. what they call it. Woohoo. <laughs> the fun of Sam's was certainly not like, they're going to go to their job as a data entry clerk. Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> you didn't even uh, get to see them there um josh if you okay let's say so let's try a thing if you could have cheat codes in real life okay but not for unlimited money i was about to to say that's not fair it's not fair to say unlimited money because like obviously that's the correct answer yep what would your cheat code be i think it would be that i could selectively fast forward well you have you seen the movie click with uh adam sandler yeah, he has a remote that can do just that. And let me tell you what, Josh, it does not work out. Okay, okay. I have not seen the, the seminal movie Click, but well, I have heard have it's very it, sad. Have time. Uh, yes, it is it, it is incredibly depressing. But yeah, uh, the fast forward button breaks, as I remember it. And it, it just, he just ruins his little life. Sure, okay, interesting. Um, then maybe it's, 
every once in a while I can do, there was always a, a cheat code that was like no clip, which would mean that like gravity didn't matter. You could just kind of like whoop and go up and float forward Ooh. through walls and things like that. So you could okay. like selectively turn that on or off. Okay. That'd be fun. What would yours be? That's a really good question. Um, The thing that popped into my head immediately was super strength. Okay. But is that a cheat code? No, it's a superpower. I just think it'd be really funny to have a cheat code where sometimes I just was really strong and I could just lift something extremely heavy and I couldn't do anything useful with it. Just like yeah. we'd be walking down the street and I just like pick up a car. Yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> I that guess that could like be a cheat code. code. That's like a mod. I mean, cheat codes would sometimes be like, you know, like you can't get hurt or you can like go through walls or um, maybe it's like when you attack, it's got the force of like it's 300 force so like when you that's punch, what i want that's everyone goes want. yeah that's what i want when paula attack force of 300 paulas got it got it got it got it got it <laughs> force of one regular person <laughs> no um that would be really fun um i would also like if we're talking about our lives becoming video games, it would be really great for hard conversations. If you know how in role playing games, it gives you like prompts of three different answers you could give. Yes. That's what I they just, do in Dream Daddy. It was just like someone said something and they were like, if someone was really mad at me and they're like, Josh, why would you think that that would be a good thing to say? I would have three different responses that i could just choose from and there was clearly an answer that was like the right good answer there's the neutral answer and then there's the chaotic answer and every time it was kind of like i didn't have to come up with the words i just chose the one i wanted to go with in that scenario Ooh, that would be really nice mm -hmm. okay i want that one too sometimes <laughs> this is different but sometimes i do picture you know like uh when sims have interactions and it's either <laughs> my only two video games i have reference for also are clearly dream daddy and the sims but um you know, in The Sims, if there's like a positive interaction, there's plus signs above their head. And if it's a negative interaction, there's red minus signs. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when people make me a little annoyed, I do picture a little red minus sign above my head. <laughs> you may so be like, beep. <laughs> so it's not like uh, the good place where you're trying to see your score as a person. It's more that like you can show selectively that what they said was good or bad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and also just like the sims and in real life it doesn't always make sense yeah sailboat money mate <laughs> negative <laughs> lost three friend points um uh, uh tale is all the time with the sims is paula what's the best way to murder a sim Because, okay, well, you know, we all did this. You know what I mean? The classic example being having your sim go into the pool, and getting rid of the guardrail. Mm -hmm. They can't get out. They drown. My uh, my personal favorite one is putting them in a, in a shed that I built, removing the doors and windows, filling it with newspaper and a bunch of grills, and then letting them keep grilling things until they burn. You know how those advocacy groups in the 2000s were like video games are rotting kids brains and they're too violent and that's what's causing them to act out in school like they shouldn't be playing these shoot 'em up games like yeah. call of duty or the halo or whatever no the problem wasn't call of duty or halo it was that the sims was teaching us all how to create perfect murders like <laughs> psychopaths like <laughs> just just putting them in the pool and having them drown wasn't enough no it's like putting grills all downstairs in the home that you've built and yeah, then and putting them upstairs burn. and then getting rid of the stairs <laughs> and really watching them freak creative. out yeah that was the thing is like at a certain point you were like it's not enough to watch them die <laughs> I want, I want to, to see the them pain. struggle. I want to see them go through the panic of realizing they're going to die and then watching them die. And then looking at their tiny little grave. Oh, yeah, because it did make a grave, didn't it? Like an urn it sometimes. A tiny little grave, and you could go visit it, you know? In the Just middle like of a, your living room. 
Just like a real serial killer, you could go visit your trophies. <laughs> your trophies. <laughs> um, yeah, that's that's real psychopath behavior. Terrifying. <laughs> imagine, okay, imagine uh that something is terribly wrong. And somehow Paula, I don't have to imagine that something <laughs> is terribly wrong. We're living it every single day right now. <laughs> okay, imagine something else is terribly wrong. Sure. And <gasps> imagine <laughs> <laughs> imagine that the sims are like a different it's not a computer like we think it's a computer game but we're actually controlling a little universe sure okay so when we do things it is it is really happening to these little sim creatures oh yeah no this makes sense the horton hears a who uh theory yes. of existence so imagine those sims true crime podcasts <laughs> <laughs> this week on sims real Plunk, 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 plunk. Bella plunk, and Mortimer plunk, Goth plunk, were just plunk, like any plunk, other Sims plunk, family. Plunk, plunk, but one day, plunk. a grill mysteriously appeared in their home. Naturally, they lit it, and suddenly the stairs disappeared. They burned alive in that home. But who's to blame? <laughs> See, I think we're giving... <clears throat> First off, I love that. If I can yes and that for a moment. Please. Um, I think we're being too human centric about how a Sims podcast would go. All right, I hear you. So if, you it. So but yeah, could you give Bella me the plunk? Do you remember yeah, Bella yeah. and Mortimer Goth? They were the ones okay. Ready? Yeah. yeah. Plink, 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 plink. Hi. Plink, plink. This week on Sims Real, I'm Sarah Koenig. <laughs> Bella and Mortimer Goth. Sailboat. Money sign. <laughs> explosion money <laughs> sign money sign question mark negative negative plus 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 picture of bella picture of mortimer sailboat, sailboat. <laughs> <laughs> like these poor sims are desperately trying to solve these mysteries <laughs> yeah right exactly they're like we were well i mean in in our human language they'd be like we were swimming and suddenly the ladder was gone. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, um, yeah, it's a, uh, it's like a ghost hunting. It's just, <laughs> <laughs> what a crappy life. I mean, all the, if, if the Sims is a real universe we're creating, all they're doing is getting murdered and woohooing. Honey, isn't that what we're doing already? <laughs> Um, Josh, I don't know if kids still have it, but I feel like we it, there was a time when uh, they were really trying to make learning fun. And so yeah. at school, you would play video games, but they would be like for learning. Mm. Oh, we're so talking Reader Rabbit. Reader Rabbit. Yes, yes, yes. Talking Reader Rabbit. Math Blasters. Math Blasters. I'm ta specifically thinking of Mavis Beacon typing. Mm. I love the idea. I don't know Mavis Be Be Beacon typing. We did one where it was space, but I do like the idea that for a while there, there were a bunch of video games, like sports video games, where they were named after people or announcers, where you've got like Tiger Woods Golf <laughs> and Madden 06. I love the idea of like Mavis Beacon, Beacon 07. <laughs> Mavis Beacon is just like a pretty successful executive assistant. <laughs> I love the idea that it's like Madden where like, if you're on the cover of Madden, you tend to then have a bad season. The next season, it's like the beacon curse. Your words per minute go down by 20. when You're on the cover of beacon of that year's beacon. Everyone, all the typists are mad about the scores that they've been given. You're like, what do you mean? I'm only a 75 speed. I'm the fastest typer in the league. <laughs> Uh, I am reading. Uh, so Mavis Beacon, I, if people remember this one, it was basically like there was just little typing games, right? And sure. you have to type words and, and that was it. Um, but here's a little fact about it. Uh, Mavis Beacon, Mavis's first name was taken from Mavis Staples, the lead vocalist for the Staples Singers. Who the was a surname, great singer. The surname derives from Beacon as in a light to guide the way. Well, that's your fact for today, folks. You learn something every day, and guess what? It's not always going to be useful. Was Sometimes the... it's going to be that Mavis Beacon's first name is taken from Mavis Staples, and now you have to know that. 
Mavis Staples is an incredibly famous activist singer. Do you, was it making you type things like the proletariat will rise again, like <laughs> workers' <laughs> rights, union rights are important, like the the role of the Cap- government capitalism. is to protect the people? <laughs> I wish. Just preparing us to be tiny little activists. Yeah. Taxes no, are a necessary of- evil. <laughs> no, that was the role of Girl Scouts. <laughs> Got it. Creating tiny little Elizabeth Warren supporters. <laughs> Are you a good typist? I am an excellent typist. Really? Now, I yes, I am. I will say I'm a very fast typist. The problem is I am very loud. Okay, got it. So I You're type good. very fast, but I type like this. <laughs> <laughs> and you make that sound too. Yeah, well, that's how Mavis taught me. Are you a good typist? <laughs> I'm not. I'm really not. Um, I have gotten better but i just like never really paid attention in computer lab when we had to practice that i just Mm -hmm. thought it was dumb so i'm a very good typist with my left hand but my right hand i essentially only use my index finger and maybe my thumb it Uh, does that phantom hand thing where it just starts acting on its own yeah right it just starts writing typing sometimes strangling people yeah exactly it starts typing my innermost thoughts i don't know (laughs) um But yeah, no, I'm really not very good at typing. I, you would think that in a digital world where I also do everything digitally, I would be faster at typing and it would have been a really good idea to spend more time paying attention to those classes. But it was also incredibly boring and I was eight. Well, I'm going to get you a subscription to Mavis Beacon. Oh, thank you. And we can, we can track it throughout different episodes of the podcast. We'll start off with, you know what? I'm bored enough to do this. This sounds great. So, Paula, I have... Every week, we're going to do a check-in. Oh, it's free online. Okay, you're going to do this. Hey, listeners at home, if you want to join the Being Earnest Beacon Challenge, the Beacon <laughs> Earnest Challenge, uh, we'll, I, oh, we, will be play, <laughs> we will be doing this every single week. And if you want to tweet at us or mention at us what your words per minute are, your highest one in that week... Uh, we'll have a leaderboard and we'll see where you <laughs> stack up versus me and Paula and the rest of the listenership. Uh, Josh, is it possible for us to to put this on the website? Oh, for sure. It's possible to put this on the website. Awesome. Hashtag Beacon Earnest. Hashtag Beacon Earnest. Folks, if you go to Mavis... Now, I, I have not... This site, it might be absolutely freaking full of viruses. I have no idea. Um, but it, there, if you go to MavisBeaconFree.com, you can download this typing software and participate in all the fun. The games like racing typing and the other racing typing game. I'll throw this on the website as well. So you can also just go to beingearnestpod.com and, and it'll Josh- be somewhere pretty high up. Josh and I will do the assessment so we get our uh, so we get our numbers. Yep, exactly. I'll see if we can put a leaderboard up. Style games. Oh hell yeah! And then we're gonna have a prize: a thousand billion dollars. Uh, maybe not a thousand billion dollars, but who knows? Maybe merch. Oh, maybe we'll have that one day. Depends what our metrics look like from participation. <laughs> I think that's gonna do it for us. I think that's gonna do it for us. Thank you for tuning in for another week uh, and listening to us. Uh, We really appreciate it. Um, We know it continues to be a relatively stressful and traumatic and (laughs) and hard time right now and uh, to varying degrees. And so just know that we, uh, it is for us too, and we're all getting through it. And we really appreciate you lending your ears to us uh, just kind of shouting into the void. Yeah. Thank you. And, uh, you know, and, 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 um, also we just appreciate you guys and, 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 um, tackle that. And we, we love you all. And, uh, we're glad everybody's, we hope everybody is staying safe and, and keeping healthy. And, um, and yeah, I wish I had something better to say, but we're going to get through this and we're going to get through this together. And if there's anything you need from Josh and I truly, um, whether, you know us or not uh let us know yeah for sure for sure we're gonna do our signature weekly segment earnest moment of the week i have one from a listener here yeah 
Yeah. Sent it in on our Instagram. Uh, our Instagram and pretty much every other social is at being earnest pod. If you have an earnest moment of the week or you just want to say, hey, uh, just drop us a line there. This one is We're online all the time now. Mm-hmm. This one is from uh, user Joe Vaus, J-O-V-A-U-S-E. I apologize if I pronounced that incorrectly. But they sent us an earnest moment. My mama is about 68 and retired. She's big into sewing and decided to make herself a reusable mask. Aww. She then recited, she then decided to keep making them and is now sending them to hospitals in NYC that are in need. Aww. She's also been ex- ending every text with a light bulb emoji because she think she quote unquote thinks everyone could use a little light these days. Aww. Okay, that's making me tear up. Debbie is a real earnest gem. Smiley <gasps> face. I love that. So that is making me tear up. I love that. I love that one. It is. It, I mean, I, I. It is so. This is such a shitty time, and it is also so inspiring to see like how wonderful people are. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And I so love that you. light bulb emoji thing. I physically not it. think about that too hard because i will burst out crying right now <laughs> so thank you for sending that in that's so lovely i love that one um i have a i have an earnest moment uh from a listener uh-huh. <laughs> <Patch's> mom <laughs> yes this Hi, is our uh, earnest, earnest moms of the week <laughs> all right uh she writes here is an imachua I am on our neighborhood listserv and there was a thread last night from a husband whose wife is pregnant with twins He was looking for an N95 mask because she needs to go in for her prenatal checkup and wants to make sure she can do that safely. Here's his request. Would anyone have an extra N95 mask that they could spare for my wife to use when she goes to Newton Wesley Hospital for her 18-week ultrasound Monday? She's pregnant with twins and at higher risk should she contract COVID-19. She has to travel alone to the appointment because the hospital is no longer allowing any partners in order to reduce the number of unnecessary people in waiting and exam rooms. Having an N95 mask would provide some protection and peace of mind, but there's obviously a total global shortage and there's no place to buy them anymore. A neighborhood immediately responded, had a mask and said, I'm sorry, I can't invite you in to pick it up, but maybe when the twins are born, we can get together. I hope your wife stays healthy and everything goes well. (laughs) Mm. Oh, that's so nice. People are really coming together, I think, in a really inspiring and wonderful way. and Being neighborly. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. I I am also loving how many drug style dead drops are happening between yes. people who need things. Like I went over to Paula's uh because when I got this microphone that makes me sound like I'm not for, on the inside of a kazoo, um also needed to pick up some accessories that were at her apartment and she and I did basically like a dance in which she placed a mic boom outside and then walked away and then I walked up and grabbed it and walked backwards and it just felt very clandestine and lovely. So it's really yes. it's it delights all the senses. <laughs> uh as always we want to thank uh our friend ryan cruz for designing the beautiful logo you can follow her on instagram at at rb cruiser and thank you to dylan dutch for our wonderful theme song he is on twitter at at dylan dutch and until next week just remember that just like the sims all we're trying to do is go to work and make woohoo <laughs> Thanks everybody. See you next week. Stay safe up. Bye.